group activations in Kundalini bodywork can look very different for different people, as you'll see in this video. The way I teach people to hold these sessions is in small groups and is part of a therapy practice. So everybody comes with a, an intention, a purpose, other than to surrender to something bigger than themselves, wiser than themselves. People will explain this phenomenon in different ways. Some people will tell you that it's the most purest energy in the world, a, a connection with God. I don't want to say that it isn't, it's just not the way that I would explain it. When I open up these spaces, I'm acknowledging that everybody in the room has different information, that they come with their souls, have different vibrations, and we create a, a collective consciousness uh, in the room. So everybody's sharing information with each other. On one level, most of us have shared parts of our life on a subconscious astral level, different times with people. This is why when we see different people, we meet them, we suddenly memories come back to us, things that we've forgotten. So when we come into group activation settings and we open up our crown to collective consciousness, we both give part of ourselves to that energy and we receive energy from the other people that, that are in the room. So this is one level of energy information transference that's going on. We, we talk about this more in depth later in relation to what is a soul? How is it made? How does it incarnate into the frequency of Gaia? But as this work is always multidimensional and multiple things are going on at once, when we open up these spaces, there are definitely different worlds that vibrate at different frequencies to ours. If we want to see this as spirit worlds, if we think of the Japanese religion, how nature spirits are, are involved in our reality, or the Muslim religion, how Dijins are involved, or the Christian. We have to be careful when we open up these spaces that the energies that we're allowing into the room, into our collective consciousness, are actually a part of us, are a part of our soul, that they're not with negative, bad in, intentions. In doing this work, there's no clear way of understanding what's going on because we are blurring the lines between separation. Where, where do you end and where does God begin or where does the other person begin as we move into these non-dualistic states? The, the Tantra in this respect is learning that we are both separate and we are both one at the same time. So if anything comes into us, is it really part of our body? Is it part of our being? From, from my perspective, it's very important to make this work grounded, to make it embodied so that it makes sense in consensual reality. This is why we primarily use it in relation to healing, into therapy, into self-development, creating visceral experiences in the body that are upgrading our DNA and our consciousness, allowing us to understand life from a different level and then grounding this information, this higher dimensional energy back into our body. Now, if we're experiencing that as, as a goddess or a deity or an angel or any kind of entity, alien being, then in a sense, this is true because we believe it. In another sense, it might be true because all of these energies, um, different dimensions vibrating at different frequencies, they all do exist. But what do we open our mind to? What are we a vibrational match for? So I just think it's very important to acknowledge there is the spiritual world alien worlds, they're all around us. But what's important is our experience, our consensual reality, the agreements and the beliefs that we're creating between each other as human beings, how we're evolving human consciousness together. And that's why it's important to all recognize in these spaces, we bring in energy, we receive an energy, other things are happening, there's definitely elements of surrender, there's so much in this universe that I don't know, that we don't know, and when we come into a state of, of deep trust with life, and we surrender to the universe, to a higher plan, to our higher self, this can really allow magical, miraculous things to happen, but we should never sacrifice our free will completely, that is part of 
of duality of being here is learning to to create through our choices, through our discernment. So whenever we're learning Kundalini bodywork, whenever we're learning this practice, we're coming to understand that there's a lot of power in polarity. And how do we harness that power within polarity? So when the bodies are, are moving and they're going into yoga and asana and mudra and they're releasing trauma, we explain this as the feminine pathway and ascending energy through the feminine pathway, through the organs, through the chakra system. Um, there's actually two, two energies that, that, that are ascending through the feminine pathway. And when we talk about the masculine pathway, then this experience of higher dimensional consciousness, of a kundalini rising, which is that polarity that takes us to this heightened state, then the movements are often are not there at all. We're, we're in deep meditation, uh, something close to what people would call samadhi or, or feeling bliss in, in absolute stillness. So when we're receiving these sessions in these rooms, most people are going into predominantly going into a feminine flow of energy and allowing that energy to to move their body to express and learn but the masculine polarity the masculine way of working is equally as important especially when we're giving sessions so the way i teach people to hold these group activations is still personal development we don't just lie down and pay a fixed sum of money and then all have have the experience we're still working with our intention the reason we're there the positive impacts we want to have on on humanity and our planet and trying to see how this work can can help us get there and then the element of surrender is still very important in what we do but we're just framing what do we surrender to and there's always a lot of education about breath about the nervous system ways to make this practice both safe and beneficial that support consciousness to keep expanding in an evolving way